Is this thing on? Hello everybody and welcome to another Infinity Evolved Skyblock on the Season Gamer server with me, Techno Jock. Been doing some redesigning since the last episode. We're, we're we're on the cusp really of being able to get this all automated. As you can see, I've made the killing chamber for the withers a little bit bigger. I've had to open up some more holes because they do tend to shift around when I'm hitting them. But um, in our end game scenario, that shouldn't be an issue. So as you can see, I've shifted around how these things are laid out. So on this side, we've got the chests that will sort out the uh, soul sand and on that side we've got the chests that will sort out the wither skulls as you can see it's all set up with the hyper rationing pipe that each of the chests will have one of the resources sitting in it these are done with uh, the b space upgrades so the farms that farm up the requisite things will just transfer them straight over to here then, what will happen is, when we want to spawn something, our computer program is going to check each of these chests using these peripheral proxy things, and it will check each of these in turn and make sure that the ones that require the skulls in them each have one skull, and the ones that have sand each have one sand. If that is all okay, and we press our button, then it pushes each of the things from the chests into the other chest in front of it. So it forces it from here to here, and it does it for all seven of the chests. Whereupon, these item conduits from Ender.io will take from the chest on a... Each one has its own separate colour. You'll see we have green, brown, blue on this side, and these will go over to their corresponding item placer, block placer. So you'll see the uh, this one over here, that's the green item conduit channel there at the top, you can see, and then you've got the brown one, you can just see there, and the blue one there. So those are the three that handle the skulls on that side. And of course there's um, the other coloured channels down here. So we've got uh, purple, cyan, light grey and grey and they go into these ones. So that's all fine. Now we also have redstone conduit as well and you will see um, that it's kind of difficult to have a look in there but you'll see these ones are on a green channel um, and the one for skulls is on a red channel and the same over here the skull ones on the red channel and the sand one on a green channel. So what happens is these uh, the resources get pushed into these chests, these chests suck them out and put them into the block placer and then a moment later a redstone signal turns on on the green channel to place the soul sand and then a moment after that a redstone signal on the red channel comes out to place the skulls. So they are always put out um, straight after that. So let's have a look at this thing in action. We go down here. This is running. It's just set up as the wither at the moment. In fact, let's have a look at it. Before we go into this too much, let's have a look at it. We'll go in and go edit wither. So there we go. We'll see this here. So we've got our go button on the bottom. We've got our redstone out on the top. The soul sand placement colour for redstone is the green one and the wither skull placement channel is the red one. Um, it will sleep a second in between each um, spawning of the wither. So we could actually replace this with a lever and just leave it on and it will just continually spawn them one second in between each. We're looking for soul sand ID is soul sand, wither skull ID is wither skeleton skull. That's how they are displayed in game. Um, and this, the C direction here is the chest direction. So these chests here that we are pushing into are to the south of these ones. If you bring up your F3, you'll see that I am facing south if you have a look. Um, about halfway down the writing there, just below the X, Y, Z coordinates, or the X, Y, Z coordinates, if you're from the UK. 
Um, so, yep, that goes to the south. Um, we are wrapping each of these soul sand chest one through four, and that's the uh, corresponding um, channel on the network. If you disconnect these and reconnect them, you'll see that's chest 12 reconnected to the network, and you'll see chest 12 is for one of the Wither Skull chests. So we've got Wither Skull chest one through three as well. Um, then uh, this is just initializing this variable for the check for each of the resources that we've got. Um, and we've got a function for that. And then we've got a function to push from each of the chests. So what it does is, in a loop, it will, if it gets a redstone input from the go button, which is, of course, on the bottom, it will check through the resources. It's going to check the soul sand chest one for soul sand ID. Soul Sand Chest 2 for Soul Sand ID all the way through, and then the Wither Skull Chest for the Wither, Wither Skull IDs. If all the resources are OK, then it will push from each of the chests, and then it will wait a second. It's going to send a bundled output on the Redstone Out channel, and it's going to do Soul Sand Place, which if you remember is the colors.green. Uh, colors waits a second, and then sets it to the output to the um, redstone red channel, so there's the w the ws place or whether it's called place, and then it waits another second. Then it resets the bundled output, so none of the channels are on, and it then sleeps the um, the i sleep, which is our pause in between um, in between spawns, and that's it. Rinse and repeat. So we can exit out of that, and if we do wither, we can set this running, press a button, a moment later, there it goes. And the teleport pad, of course, teleports that down into the killing chamber. And, of course, now that I've expanded this out a little bit, it's got plenty of room, ouch, that it drops down and is then able to be killed and we could drop multiple ones down and they'll just get out of each other's way that, in that way. Let's see if I can... I can't quite reach. It's a bit weird. I can't seem to reach over there. But I'll sort that out in a moment. He's not going anywhere over there and he's not any danger to the rest of us. So on with the next thing. I've just noticed the root nerd has gone offline about doing a little troll. Hmm, could be fun. We could nip over to his base and do something fun. Um, but I'm wanting to sort out that weather, actually, before we go much further. Now, there's a couple of things I need to grab from our storage over here. Um, and I want to get shears, which are there, perfect, and a mana tablet. I need that for a couple of things, um, and that should be good. So I want to get some. I want to get one piece of redstone, actually. Yep, we've got redstone. Cool. And I want to get some long grass as well. Perfect, because I need to make some. Uh, redstone root. There we go. Now I also want, looking to see what I've got here, I need, oh, we don't have the colours that I need. Is that cyan one? No, it's light blue. I need two cyan and three red. Well, let's get a couple of this out. I think I need... I need my mortar and pestle, which is over here as well. I accidentally put it back over here. Let's get that. Yeah. Perfect. So we'll make some more floral fertilizer to get some of these flowers up. It's been something I've been meaning to do, along with everything else I've been meaning to do, obviously. Um, do we not have any? Flowers. Let's get some of these flo normal flowers to make some floral fertilizer. Um, that'll be enough to make two. So we can go petals, 
petals. Petals and petals. So we need mortar and pestle like this to get some of that. And then if we go, actually we can just do that, 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 and that, and then put that there, gets us floral fertilizer. And hoping that two of these, let's Clear this out a little bit so there's more room for the flowers. Really? Really? None of what we need? Okay. Let me get this sorted out. Okay, that should give us enough now. We've got red flower there. We've got cyan there. And I've we've just got one red flower. I've been pretty unlucky with that. And I did make quite a bit of stuff. But um, we should have what we need now. So we've got three mystical red pet petals, two cyan and a redstone root. And my inventory is getting increasingly horrendous, I think the term would be. So if we go that, 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 and that, and then go like that, this thing is the bell thorn functional flower. And this, what it will do, is it inflicts harm on any living beings, save for players, around it. So I'm thinking this might be our way of being able to kill the wither. Now we need a mana pool. And we've got mana in our mana tablets. We'll use that for the time being. Let's go up here. Um, ooh, that's one thing I need to do. I need to go back down here. I want to make this into the floating version of this flower as well. So we should have spare glimmering flowers in here. There's a glimmering flower. That'll do nicely. We've got some dirt. We've got a pasture seed, just the one, that's fine, and a glimmering yellow flower. So floating yellow flower like that, done. And the bell thorn, add to that, makes a floating bell thorn. Perfect. Exactly what we wanted. Now, let's go back over here and see what happens when we put this down next to our wither. Let's go Let's see, got this one here. Let's put this out the side a little bit. Make a little platform that's relatively safe. We'll put our bell thorn there, and it does light up the area, which is cool. Um, let's do that, and that will give a little bit of mana. Now that, is that going to work? Does not appear to be doing it. Hmm. Maybe it doesn't have enough mana. We'll, we'll give it a little bit more. That should be plenty, but it's not doing anything, is it? Irksome. I thought that was going to work. Hmm. That's a shame. I had that all figured out for that. Never mind. Will, in that case. Um, I'm going to leave that there for the moment because I need to get my Wand of the Forest to be able to pick, stick the mana back into my mana tablet. So that means then that we're going to be doing something else to kill the Wither. Now the normal mob grinder doesn't work, but there is the other grinder, but that's a considerable way ahead of us just now. We can make the pellets of RTG fuel, that would be fine. A draconium block is way ahead of us. Mana dust is, whilst not completely ahead of us, we need draconium. We can get liquid XP easily enough, but molten draconium less. So that's two ingots of molten draconium and one bucket of liquid XP. Like I say, liquid XP, easy enough to get hold of. But um, yeah, Sword of the Wyvern, that needs Wyvern cores. Nether Stars can do Draconic cores, but that needs an awful lot of Draconium. So you see where I'm going with this? 
we need draconium. So, with that in mind, I have already set up in between episodes uh, this little thing here, which very similar to our um, our obsidian making thing, and if you remember we did something similar with um, making netherrack uh, before. This makes us endstone. If you put glowstone in the top, glowstone into a stone barrel full of lava makes endstone. So yeah, we want endstone because endstone itself, and um, we don't need that. We want that if we go to pulverizer, pulverizer and endstone because it's crushed endstone and then crushed endstone gives us draconium, broken draconium or and platinum. We've got plenty of platinum, but it's the draconium that we want. So I stuck a stack of endstone through the pulverizer and then through this thing earlier on and from one stack we got seven broken draconium ore. So if that's a representative number then we're going to need an awful lot of endstone going forward and then we need to pulverize it up and pulverizing it is pretty slow work. Or it was because now I have put this pulverizer up to being a resonant one with the three augments in it. So I'm going to bung that in there because it goes very quickly. Now what I did want to do is I wanted to do something very similar with these machines. So let's grab these and that. Um, and we will go over here and here we have the way of upgrading these things. So we'll take our basic fluid transposer and with a, an Electrum gear, I originally had made Lumium gears because I can't follow instructions, um, but that you see that is a hardened fluid transposer. And we'll do the same thing with our magma crucible so those now have extra slots for the augments. Now if we go over here, we can do the same thing with the Signalum gear and fused quartz to get up to the reinforced version and then you guessed it over here we've got the stuff that we need silver ingots and indium gears and we get the resonant version so we've got our magma crucible there let's go back over here put that down and these will still have the settings that we had before um, they retain their power as well, but you'll see the buffer, it's a much bigger buffer that we get. Um, and we've got three extra slots for augmentations in here. So we can still have redstone control. Not that we need redstone control for these, but hey, it's always handy to have. Um, the modular framework, we can reconfigure the outputs so that, and the inputs, so that's pretty handy. We want to keep that one. And the integrated servo mechanism for transfer out is again eh, fairly handy to have. Now we've got to connect these back up to power. So let's just get out of the way a little bit of ourselves. Put that on the back there, that on the back there, and we can go that to there, and then that to there. And we've got these connected back up. That power should, yeah that one's going up first, uh, that one will obviously take a little while to go up because this one's taking all the power just now. But you can see we've got a fair bit of power coming in from the MFSU over at the reactor. So once that's full up, then that will work. Now we need the augments. And then these augments, if we have a look, augment. It's these ones that we want. The secondary reception coil overclocked modular gearbox and the space-time flux unifier and um, so you can see two times speed four times speed eight times speed and corresponding increase in the energy used as well so bronze around a redstone chipset with two re redstone reception calls gets to the first tier then golden chipset again with bronze around it and pyrithium dust at the bottom and then we've got bronze with a diamond chipset cryothium dust and the bronze ingots again for the third one. So over here we have got the stuff for making cryothean dust and I made a little bit more than was strictly necessary. I already made the pyrithium dust 
which is relatively simple as well. That's all stuff that we've got and had before as well. Um, you'll see here I've got stuff for making the first tier. And we'll make the second tier like that. And then our third tier like that. And that's us. We are good to go. So let's go over here, take these and go one, two, and three. And you've got to have the um, them in order. So you can't just go and stick a, a, the, the uh, level three in. To have a level three, you've got to have a level two. To have a level two, you've got to have a level one. Let's uh, go into this one. And exact same idea in there. And that is it. So now when it comes time for us to melt something down, this will go considerably faster. Um, and I don't have anything to melt down quite yet, but I thought it was worth doing whilst we're doing that sort of stuff. Now, anyway, um, I need to get rid of some of these flowers and things. Let's see. This should be finished doing that. So I need to get some way of feeding in and out of this. What I might do is set up a chest and filter thing. Um, oh, I could go underneath. Yes, I think I might go underneath for this. Yes. And um, let's get, we've got these. Let's get a chest. One of, that'll be good. And we'll go and come out. Yeah, there would be Actually, let's not quite do it like that. Let's do it like that. Can I come down? Oh, no, I'm going to need to do it like that. Because, in fact, in that case, I'm just going to come out that far. Because if we go down too low, we're going to go and hit the top of that, and we don't, we don't want to interact with that in any way, shape, or form at the moment. Let's do that. And I want to put that there at the road. Let's go. Um, oh yeah, if I do this in from the bottom, that will allow that to connect. And we can say in and out, and it doesn't require a signal at all. This one, we will say... Um, this one also is going to be in out. I might want to be careful with this. I don't think anything I can think of is going to double pulverize. Let's just check. Let's see. Putting that in there, no, it does not make any difference. Excellent. Let's come over here. Let's grab the rest of this end stone. Put it in there. Grab as much as we can, run over with it, and put it in. There we go. That's going to be nice and quick. What's oh, going to do it as quick as it possibly can? We might need some upgrades in that then. And that would be a good thing to do, to actually have some upgrades for that. Because it seems to be doing it as quick as it possibly can. Is that not actually? Oh. There we go, that's better. Hmm. That would be... I think there's a setting to allow this. Extract. Allow self-feed enabled. I think that's what I needed to do. I can never quite remember. But that's not extracting now. That is in out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. self is enabled. That should allow in out. Self-feed enabled. Is that working? It does not appear to be working. That's most irksome. 
Why can that not work? I wonder why that's not working. That's all very well and good, but that's not going to allow me to feed in the way I want it to. Hmm. I may have to shift things about a bit. We knew that this was going to get crowded. Um, let's shift our induction smelter then. Oh, oh good God. That's, that's not what I wanted to have happen. Let's go... Okay, that can go there to there and there to there. And then our in this is getting rapidly towards being a spaghetti mess as well. So our induction smelter can go... Let's just put that on top of there. Connect it up like thus. So that's back to being powered. I haven't update, upgraded that because I'm just not in the mood for upgrading that. Um, and we will go like that. Grab these, stick it on the side of that one, and then up. So we'll do in from that bottom, and then out there. And is that... Yeah, that's going to work. That's kind of handy that... Nah, we'll just disconnect it from there at the moment, because we're not really... Ooh, although... It's an idea, maybe. Right. Why is this being a pain now? Why is that being a pain? It was input from the bottom. Hmm. Input from the bottom. Okay, let's just do insert now. That'll insert. Um... That'll ext extract. Always active. That one's fine. This one. Always active. There we go. I think it was that self feed was jiggering things up because it was just pushing in and coming back out again because it wasn't filtered. Right. That's going in. It's going to keep it relatively full up. Yep. And that is now going, so we can take another stack of this over, and with any luck, we will see that this, like that, will very slowly crush it up, and hopefully by the end of the stack we will have around about 14 draconium ore. What I will do is... I didn't really want to take all of that out. I only wanted to take out four... What we definitely, definitely, definitely will be doing with this stuff is what we really haven't been doing with an awful lot of the other stuff. And we'll be getting that. And I might want to even get Fortune. But we'll definitely be hammering this down because there's a chance that we get extras from this. What a delightful colour that is. Ooh, I like that. So, yeah. We don't have anything at the moment in terms of extras for that but he we will sort that out now um, what uses has that got we can make draconium ore out of it which is quite cool um, so we need draconium dust we got a luck bonus okay Okay, so we've got to make it into the draconium dust, so we've got to do it once more. And we get we get one. What? What? 90% uh, chance for second output, that would have been much better. Crusher we don't have, the hammer. So 80% chance and 10% for the second. Sag mill. Yeah, that's still not good. Pulverizer. Nope. Okay. So it just gives us one. That's rubbish. 
Okay, that's rather disappointing. On that disappointing bombshell, I think it's probably time for us to set off this thing again. If I grab this stuff here, and I will go over and go like that, and then put in a bunch of stuff into there, you can see that's going to happily use that. Shifted this around a little bit as well, so this acts as a buffer tank now. Um, so we've got like 256 buckets worth of lava that we can use, so we can do 256 um, of these at a time. And it goes reasonably quickly, and obviously this will slowly be filling that back up, or not so slowly filling that back up whilst it's doing it. That takes us up to a relatively good um, spot for um, stopping off. I obviously need to kill that wither at some point relatively soon as well. And we're going to go on and continue getting a bunch of draconium. Um, but until the next time, people, you know what to do. Check out the other Season Gamers. Cool stuff happening. Uh, we've got a couple of new guys that have been doing some stuff. I'm sure you'll have seen them by the time this video goes out. So make sure you keep an eye on the channel and see what's new. Until the next time, though, it's a very goodbye from me. And, of course, have a funs.